uh, analyzing the game between Sambragas 35 and Moravi, submitted as a candidate for Game of the Week in Week 3 of Team 45-45 League. Uh, this is a pretty interesting game, and hopefully I can offer some useful insights to players of all strengths. All right, let's uh, have a look. Okay, we have the center counter defense. And we'll just go through the first few opening moves until we find something interesting happen. Okay, it was at this stage that White starts committing an error, committing errors. And once again, this is uh, going to be very useful. I'll, we'll try to explain why does White play this error. Okay, White stops and plays H3. Uh, it's not a developing move. Uh, obviously, White has is playing this move off of some kind of instinct, and the instinct has to do with so maybe some pain he's received in the past, okay? Because that's about the best explanation I can give. Obviously, uh, White doesn't want Black playing Bishop G4. Uh, he doesn't want that pin. Now, why doesn't he want the pin? Well, let's let's discuss it. There's two reasons. Uh, it has to do with actually both these pawns hanging, okay? You say what? Both those pawns? Well, let's just go back a moment and think. If the, if the bishop was on G4. And took the knight. The queen recaptures. Uh, the the pawn on d4 hangs. Okay. Right. Now let's just get rid of those squares. Uh, and if the bishop came, whoops. If the bishop came to g4, and the bishop went to e2, and the bishop took the knight, and you take back. Now the pawn on c4 hangs by the knight. So this to me is one of the reasons probably why white played h3. He's trying to prevent both of those things from happening. But really he doesn't have to worry about either of those. It's his move. He has plenty of time to uh, continue his development and avoid those threats before they even exist. Okay? So that explains I, to, in, to my mind why white played h3 here. But it doesn't cost them the game. What costs them the game will be apparent uh, soon soon enough. Okay, so white black just continues his development, as does white. Now there's mounting pressure on uh, d4 that white needs to deal with. And once again, the assault on d4 continues. Black is conducting the opening energetically. Okay, it is at this point that White loses complete track of the game and gets the much worse of it. And let's discuss this position for a moment before we uh, consider what White does. Okay, what White needs to do, he's got two useful plans here. He can play Bishop E2 and Castle Kingside, or he could Castle Queenside right now and then uh, attempt a, a Kingside attack. Those, are, to me, are the two logical plans. But what White does is he neglects his development and soon runs into a bad game when the center opens up. Okay, now what White does is he uh, he's going to attempt to get rid of that fianchettoed bishop on g7. And this is just bad in a l for a lot of reasons, and Black is really able to exploit this and get the better game really quick. And it's something I've seen with lower-rated players they seem to like to set up this battery of uh, of the queen and bishop and then put the bishop down there on h6 and trade off that uh, bishop. I don't know why. I've seen it for years and years and years. It's just something that lower rated players like to do. It isn't always necessary. Uh, it's thematic in the dragon to do something like this. Uh, if you're going to play this like a dragon, Sicilian dragon position, but in that case, the white king has already castled uh, uh, queenside and and the kingside pawns are advancing up the board trying to open up the position and and break into the black king position. Okay, so black punishes this error uh, rather quickly and, and very nicely. Okay, bishop takes h6, queen takes h6, and knight f5. My, my mouse is a little tricky today. It's trying to play two moves at once. Okay. Now, black has a little sacrifice to open up the position because, once again, the white king is still stuck in the center of the board. 
Now let's take a look at this position. He's offering a pawn, but uh, but he's going to. It's not really an a pawn offer at all because Black's going to have a lot of tactics available. What does White do here? White's already got the worst game. There's no useful good move here, and there's there's a little trick that White can fall into right now. A lot of people might look at this and say, well, aside from the free pawn, what can I do? Well, how about if I play knight g5? Uh, then I'm then I'm attacking that pawn uh, a second time, and he can't really guard it. Well, there's a tactic here, a little trick of interference. If knight g5, uh, black has this fine little move e3, attacking the queen and cutting off the line of communication of its defense of the knight on g5. Uh, White just looks like he loses a piece right here. If if pawn takes knight, uh, the queen takes g5. Matter of fact, if uh, white tries knight d4 here, black just goes ahead and plays it anyways. Uh, pawn takes, and the queen comes in with check, and black gets this really wonderful game in a hurry. <laughs> So, White's already in trouble here. Black's got the better game. Let's see how it continues. Knight e4. Now White's up a pawn, but Black has uh, attack attacking possibilities here. Pinning the knight. If White does nothing, he loses a piece. So White guards the knight. And Black goes and attacks it again. White guards the knight, and whoops, we run into a pin. Now White's going to lose a piece. That's all all there is to it. And the problem is right here. That White King, he didn't castle, and because he's stuck in the center of the board, uh, White has now lost a piece. <laughs> and really, the game is the game is over. Uh, he continues the assault. <laughs> and there's really nothing White can do. If you stop here and look for a moment, look at the clocks too. Both sides have played this extremely quickly. It's like a blitz game. I don't understand that. You have all this time, uh, at your disposal to find moves and you're just wasting your time. You're not stopping to think and, and see possibilities. And at this point White decided to resign. There may be a couple things I, I missed in here. Let me go back. Uh, see, I think back 20 might might do it. Okay, let's see. I remember looking at this briefly. There was some other tricks in here where White could try to hang on to the piece a little bit longer, but he was still going to run into problems because of the of the open file on the pin. A very nice game by Black. Uh, he punished White's errors, and White can just sit and regret that he didn't spend time on this on this game. Okay, uh, that's all for this one. I thank you for your time and your attention.